and welcome. It's been a couple years since I've made any videos. Um, and this is definitely off the beaten path of what I used to make as far as box mods and everything go. But today I'd like to start a project to document creating a new head unit for my 3D printer. As you can see on the screen, uh, I have a Tronxy 4XY X5SA Pro uh, 3D printer. And at this point, my printer does not resemble anything like this. Um, if you note, I never put these wood strips on it because they look tacky as hell. So, this printer, kind of a mixed bag. Um, it is very large. The build space on it is 330 by 330 by 400. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty big printer as far as everything goes. Uh, but I knew when I bought it that I was going to immediately start modifying it, as I am prone to do with just about everything I buy. So what's interesting about this one is, if we go back to some of the original pictures here, um, some of my first prints with this printer were uh, printing replacement parts for the printer head. And I've been working on kind of this project uh, a while. I've definitely learned a lot about 3D printing and 3D modeling in the time that I've had it. I originally bought this back in April of 2020, right when COVID hit, and I found myself at home for quite a while. <laughs> but as you can see here, this is a pretty simple uh, print head. Um, you can't see actually the hot end, but it is rather anemic, and it wasn't really capable of printing PET G uh, very well. Uh, I could definitely do PLA just fine, but it was very limited in regards to what it could do as far as other filaments. Um, I was specifically interested in maybe messing around with uh, nylon later on. Uh, I still haven't gotten to that, but I found PET G works for the majority of what I do. This is the old print head. Uh, I think I got another action shot here. Uh, this is when I first put the printer together. This was uh, one of the vase 3D prints that I did as a test. It actually did uh, fairly well. Um, this was the crappy PLA that came with it. I still have three reels of this god awful green color. And obviously, I hadn't trimmed up the belt here. So I've gone through a couple of revisions now. Uh, Originally, I downloaded this model from Thingiverse, and parts of this were supposed to be modular, and then the uh, the back plane here was fixed up and all around, and you could see printing in that other picture. Uh, that was meant specifically to mount to uh, the Tronxy uh, back plate. And you can see there's the new extruder that I bought. Uh, this was the E3D Volcano, which I've had a lot of good results with. And then I think I ordered this fan because they're supposed to be super quiet. I also consequently don't put out that much air, which is probably why they're quiet. And then these little 30 millimeter blowers. Um, these things are actually surprisingly strong. Um, here that whole thing is mounted on the back plane. Uh, obviously it looks like I had some fitment issues here. Some of the things I didn't like about this are obviously the Z probe. Uh, this thing is terrible. Uh, it was so hard to get reliable and accurate measurements from it, zeroing it in on the bed and everything. Um, I later on switched to a precision piezo. I'll go over. Again, that fan didn't really push much air. I ended up having issues with uh, cooling the heat sink, which can be found behind here. And then, obviously, uh, the ETFE tubing here indicates that I was using uh, indirect drive to feed the filament in. So I wasn't very happy with all of this, so I set out to redesign. And I'll go to some of these. 
Sorry about all the light wave things on here. There's LEDs above this, so we're doing some weird conflict. So this is the bare bones of one of the first uh, head units that I designed. And basically, this these parts fit together and bolt to the existing uh, plate that's on the printer. And I think I have... So that plate looks like this. Uh, here it is mounted on the printer. So these bolts go all the way through onto uh, the back where um, the other side of the belts mount, so we can't get rid of those. But these holes here are available for us to use to screw things into those as well, but they're not threaded. So our first step was getting measurements, my first step rather, was getting measurements from where these holes were located and trying to figure out how to best mount something to this to make a new printer head. As you can see here, um, I didn't quite get the alignment right at first. Uh, definitely a lesson to be learned there in taking good measurements. Uh, I tried to get these photos as straight on as I could. There is still some parallax and perspective issues. Like you can see the inside edge of this and this. So I mean, it tells you the lens is throwing things a little bit. Uh, and you know, there's a lot to say for having a good micrometer or whatever measuring tools you're going to use. Uh, I put this in as a scale for the 3D program to use to measure off of, obviously. So this was basically my revision one. Um, I designed some of the parts on here, downloaded others, and it was kind of a hit bash of everything put together. And that was basically where I started uh, this general concept. And we'll be following it with some improvements, hopefully, in SolidWorks. Uh, the next step of the build was putting on the uh, knockoff Titan extruder here. There's a PTFE tubing that goes all the way down into the heat sink, and then the guts of the Titan mount here, and there's a stepper motor back here. Uh, from the other side you can see kind of what was going on there. Uh, the stepper motor mounted in here. Uh, here is one version of it in action. Um, I hadn't started using threaded inserts yet, so those aren't visible. This uh, fan shroud here it's mirrored on the other side. I downloaded that from Thingiverse. It worked okay. Um, obviously, I, I've gone a long way in what I've learned about 3D printing, that's for sure. Uh, this was actually uh, a keyboard that I was printing, half of a keyboard anyway. Uh, the most recent revision, and what is currently printing on my printer in the background, uh, you can see here. Uh, I've attached the p uh, precision piezo here because you don't want to get too much past this point without at least testing that the, the piezo is actually detecting the bed. Um, otherwise you got to tear it all apart again. As one downside of this design is to really monkey around with uh, the heat sink and the heating block and reposition and stuff, you basically have to have it torn down to this point. And then all put together, uh, this is essentially what it looks like. Now the wires are kind of a mess. Um, one of my projects someday will be consolidating a lot of this into some bundled wire. But right now, uh, this was my most recent version until I made a change that kind of inspired me to do this project. And like here in this picture, you can see I used a lot of threaded inserts. Um, this made a huge difference actually in being able to assemble it and disassemble it without wearing out the plastic and the way the screws thread into it. So I was glad I did that. And it also provided an opportunity to attach this brace for a little bit of extra rigidity. That's essentially what got me to this point. Um, 
I'm a little embarrassed to show my SolidWorks model of that because I made some changes and it basically got messed up. And that realized, made me realize I need to go back and kind of redo the model with what I've learned about SolidWorks and how I can improve designing that model so it's more adjustable in the future. Um, some other things I didn't like about Tronxy, uh, they use some weird knockoff uh, stepper motors in these and they're all wired backwards. Uh, when I went and upgraded the control board for the printer, I used a duet. I got that here. This is a really interesting board. Uh, but the uh, the drive wires do not match up to the garbage stepper motors in the Tronxy kit. I think if I did this all over again and I had another uh, let's say yeah, what is it? Two Sapphire uh, 3D printer Two Tree Sapphire yeah uh, this is probably what I'd go with more um, price wise it's price wise it's definitely cheaper this one's smaller I think they have a larger version uh, but they do have yeah maybe not this one exactly uh, yeah. printers Yeah, I should have looked this up beforehand. But basically, they have a core XY kit uh, that is comparable uh, to the Tronxy. You're like, oh, that's actually a pretty good price for the Tronxy. Uh, just for parts and everything, you'll probably spend twice as much money upgrading it afterwards. But for getting uh, all the parts, including the gantry for um, the Z, and other stuff, it, it's not too terrible. Uh, but I know Two Trees has a similar kit with linear rails on them, so it'd probably be better. Uh, let's see, I upgraded the control board. I replaced some of the stepper motors, most notably in the extruder. Uh, I replaced the build plate with a PEI sheet. Replaced the belts with better quality belts. Uh, I replaced the pulleys uh, with tooth pulleys, so you don't quite get that uh, ridging effect in your prints when the belt rolls over them. Otherwise, it's just basically the belt teeth on a bare pulley. And it kind of vibrates it a little extra. And I did print. Uh, these corner things that go right here that support this a lot better. Uh, there's a lot of leverage on this bolt right here uh, when you tension the belts. And I never had a lot of faith in their ability not to like bend over and warp over time. So I just 3D printed. Uh, it basically looks like a box. So that's been essentially my experience with this Tronxy printer so far. <coughs> I do get good prints out of it, um, although recently they started degrading to the level of I didn't know what I was doing wrong. So I started over with a blank uh, profile in Cura and set about following the uh, the teaching tech guide, which shout out to uh, that guy. He uh, did an amazing job. Uh, with this whole website devoted to calibrating your 3D printer. And following it has definitely improved everything about my 3D prints. So there's that. Um, let's see, I got an outline here, what I wanted to talk about. So I've done one design and I've done a couple of design iterations on this already. I do have a lot of these resources put together, so I'm not going to go through the steps of looking all over the internet to find some random model or something else like that. 
I will have them mostly just stored up and ready to go, uh, but I will discuss kind of that process of it. Uh, let's talk about the parts. So we talked about the printer. Uh, we got the printer came with a Titan extruder knockoff, and this looks really expensive for some reason. I think on E3D site. There we go. Yeah, it's right here. It's listed at 32 pounds, so now well, 36 now, I guess. Uh, that seems a more reasonable price, even with the difference in U.S. dollars or anything. Um, so I don't know what's going on with Illustrator, but maybe they're having trouble importing them from the U.K. now. But uh, the Tronxy did come with a knockoff of what is essentially exactly this, but it's not E3D branded. Uh, additionally, I purchased the E3D Volcano Kit. Um, had really good experience with it so far. It can definitely lay down the plastic as far as keeping it hot and everything. I went through, basically accidentally destroyed one of the heater blocks, so I've already replaced that. And I got a different heating element for the new one, and I also replaced the thermistor. So for approximately eight months printing so far, um, I've had to replace a few things, and I'm okay with that. Back to the outline. Uh, Precision Piezo Z-Probe. Uh, that was definitely one of the things that caused me to have to redesign uh, this whole mount, as it were. Uh, the way the, the piezo connects and senses where the hot end is hitting is really specific. Um, I think even in my pictures, it's right here sandwiched between these two black parts, and when the nozzle it's pressed, it flexes on that piezo, which is right in between there. So that was one of the driving reasons why I ended up designing this. And the other reason was I wanted a direct drive um, head mount unit. So I could do things like TPU and such. <laughs> so that was an awesome upgrade for this printer. Uh, definitely changed bed leveling and everything for me, um, especially with the Duet. They have really nice uh, mesh bed leveling. Pull up the printer here. It is currently printing a new fan shroud uh, that you probably saw in Kira here. Uh, it's not very good contrast, but that's a new shroud that I'm printing, um, just so I have something that works good. This was designed in a previous model, obviously. But the heat map here with the piezo probe uh, really changes and you know amplifies the quality of the prints because it just knows where everything is. And running a 25 millimeter grid, uh, well, space grid along this really does some awesome stuff. So between the duet and the octoprint before, I gotta say I'd go with the duet, honestly. Uh, just for ease of use and everything. Mm, let's see here. Uh, the E3D pancake stepper. I bought this because it's smaller and less mass on it. The gantry is a better thing because then you don't get as much uh, throwing mass around on the bed, as it were. That was one of the reasons why I chose to go with an Core XY printer, is I didn't really like the concept of the bed slingers. So reducing the weight on the gantry as much as possible. It's not a huge difference, but uh, this isn't. This doesn't need to be a high power stepper at all, and it cranks the uh, filament through just fine for my experience. Threaded inserts, I uh, spoke about these a little bit before. 
These ones are pretty amazing. Um, you got a hundred of them for eighteen bucks. Basically, eighteen cents uh, threaded insert. The other thing that you really want to get with this, provided you have an accompanying soldering iron, um, this uh, hip right here fits perfectly in my Hacko soldering iron that people may have seen on other videos of mine. But this changed uh, the quality and the ability for me to set these uh, threaded inserts. So that is probably a key tool in being able to screws and bolts uh just honestly i've just bought samplers of metric screws or bolts depending on how you want to think of them uh off of amazon and then i replace them every time. that's basically the parts that we'll be working with a little dip into the tools for our design considerations. Now let's talk about that. So overall we want a nice rigid structure. Um, this design is very rigid um, and I printed it with the back, the vertical part here flat on the bed, which means the layer lines go like this through this uh, part that sticks out here. Not the greatest situation for structural stability, but I did increase the thickness of that back plane part because of that. Mm, it's got to mount to the existing back plate. Uh, it's pretty much a given. This is the back plate again, so we're going to be trying to line up screw holes with these specifically. And there's a couple others that we can use to stabilize the whole structure, namely these up here. Uh, it's got to integrate the piezo probe, which is actually pretty easy to do. Uh, I definitely had some trials and tribulations uh, with this groove mount to the E3D uh, heat sink, but I think that was just the quality of my prints before, <laughs> if I'm being honest. And we will essentially recreate a uh, part like this to interface with the uh, Titan extruder and just basically it's going to be like an extension of this in between here. Uh, it's got to mount the E3D hot end uh, which I just talked about. Um, this one I did not previously integrate the y-axis limit into but I think I want to do that. I lost about I want to say 20-25 mil off of uh, the left side of the print bed because of the way I ended up kind of yanking it around last time. And this one I would very much like to provide some other way for accessory mounts, which is essentially what happened here. Uh, this brace, I was experimenting around with forced air instead of cooling fans for the parts, and I ended up just mounting something to where these threaded holes were. So. Having that ability would be really cool. So we've covered our background, our revisions, and now we get ready to do what we gotta do. Alright, I took a quick break here. So, first part of our project is really getting organized. And E3D has helped us out considerably in that. And that they have great documentation on all of their projects and all of their product solutions. So our main interest here is the volcano. And if we click on that and go to their documentation and data sheets. Um, Alright, I say that and then there's nothing on there. But the one we're really interested in is uh, these drawings that they offer. So here's the volcano nozzle, and this gives all sorts of data sheet dimensions and everything. If we had to, we could rebuild our three dimensional models from this because it gives everything that we need to know 21 millimeters high, the hexagon, 7 millimeters, uh, there's inner diameters and outer diameters. But what we're really interested 
interested in will be some of these parts. Okay, that one's not great. The block, okay. Yeah, we can work with this. If we had to, we could model a mock-up of this and make sure we got all the parts in the right places. Gives us breakdown on dimensions and everything. Fortunately, um, some nice individual has already done that for us. Uh, looks like Maker Boz on Thingiverse has already done that. And these are the uh, project models that I use uh, to start with. And then additionally, I also found this dummy model for the the Titan Extruder by Chris Quirky. And these are pretty old at this point, but <clears throat> they work perfectly fine. So got that going for us. So what do we start with? Well, SolidWorks is my tool of choice. Um, there's a couple of reasons behind this. Mainly because this was the first CAD program that I ever messed around with. Uh, this has been kind of a long uh, learning process for me. I think the original version I used was 2009. Uh, but I was fortunate that I can purchase an academic license for SolidWorks instead of paying whatever outrageous license it is. Uh, I think it's like $9,000 or something. So if you're a student, I highly recommend paying the 100 bucks and getting yourself a year of SolidWorks. Uh, it's a great program. I originally purchased this almost a year ago to start on another project, and I've learned so much about it in the meantime. Originally, I was considering using Fusion 360, um, but it lacks one of the key features that I really like in uh, in SolidWorks, and that's configuration. Configurations in SolidWorks lets you do some pretty amazing stuff with inheritance models and being a programmer. That's kind of one of the ways I think. So even though Fusion 360 is free and it may work for you. I chose to use SolidWorks for this project. So to start with, we are going to create a new assembly because we're going to work with some of those parts that we already had. And let me find my project. So let's start off with the volcano. This is essentially uh, the basis of our entire, uh, let's see, oh look, they already have it assembled. Well, let's open that up and take a look. And I will make sure to check uh, the licensing on this and see if I can include the files. Let's see. Well, I'm not Joshua, so you can look for that. Four files were suppressed. Okay, that's probably why I didn't use this last time. Yeah, that's kind of messed up. All right, I'll just start over. So here is our blank assembly, and what's notable here is our different planes that we get to work on. And I'm going to try to keep these in an orderly fashion so we can make things make sense. Let's start with the nozzle. Uh, let's see. I don't know. That one's got the nearest save on it, but that one's a little long. Yeah, let's go with this one. Again, these are just mock-ups. Um, 
so it's not entirely critical that they're perfectly exact. And what I want to do is get this mated. I think this is fixed. And we have an axis in here. So what we'll do real quick is edit this part. And And so now we're editing the nozzle part here. And what I really want to do is just throw a reference geometry in it. Well, I guess we don't even have to do that. So what we can do is made up uh, these planes. So I just matched uh, the front plane from the nozzle to the front plane center. And we got that. And then if we expand right here, we can do the right plane and the right plane. Get that on. So now everything kind of matches up with that. And then I think the last thing I want to do is let's define this as the bottom. So we got the bottom of the nozzle there, and I want to make that flush with the top plane. And that will kind of give us our consistent mapping between all of our future parts. And we'll try to work with that. So that's kind of our our zero 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 for X, Y, and Z. And I like to save often because occasionally this program does crash. So let's keep going. Uh, let's get the heat block here. Open that up. And we're just going to throw that down anywhere because what we're going to end up doing is lining it up with parts on here. So I've read a couple of guides on how to seat your nozzle versus your heat block. And some say you should insert the heat break beforehand and then screw the nozzle tight around. Well, I had a bad experience with that. And what happened was there is a gap in between this face that I have selected right here and the face of the heat block. And then what ended up further happening was filament creeping in and up the threads here. Uh, so I would definitely like to avoid that in the future. Uh, so we're going to mate those two faces together. And mating means uh, we're just basically telling the program that we want these things to be in contact with each other. So now those are in the same plane. This isn't actually moving up or down, just moving left and right, because we have created this constraint where this face must attach to that. And the next thing we want to do is make this centric with this. And I'm just holding shift here. So that's our little concentric icon. So now we know that the nozzle is essentially seated in heat block. And then let's keep our line going. Turn that off. So here's our reference. Okay, for our heat block, we have our front plane, and then we have our front plane. Uh, they aren't matching up because the nozzle is a little bit offset in heat block, which is fine. But the one thing I do want to do is make sure that they are parallel, which SolidWorks has thankfully uh, selected for us right so that is two parts down in our assembly. 
out the gun. Now insert the heat brake. Let's see, we got two files here. One is nearer than the other. I suspect this is when I might have previously been <laughs> editing these. Uh, That looks like the right one. We'll find out. Oh wow, yeah, that's kind of a dirty import. Let's look at the other one. All right, that's much cleaner and simpler. I think we're probably gonna go with that. So I'll get rid of that. The first thing we want to do is butt this up against the nozzle. So make that neat. Now we can see what it did here is not exactly what we wanted it to do. It lined up these on the same plane and going in the wrong direction. So what we can do is go over here and flip the alignment around. That does that neat little animation. And then what we want to do is make these concentric with each other. Which is essentially that. So now we have our heat brake assembled to our heat block. And that Again, these are just dummy parts. Um, the main thing we're concerned with is, is they are dimensionally accurate. And I believe, I think I made this one, so I'm pretty positive. <laughs> I usually pull out my uh, micrometer and measure things directly when I have to. Uh, let's keep going. Let's get the heat sink in here. Let's see. There we go. <clears throat> Again, um, I'm just following basic steps that we already have, just mating up known pieces and trying to build up our model. So again, let's make those coincident. And then I have to pick something on here to make this concentric too. Now this actually has the inside of it threaded. Uh, that's not great. You can see the threads right here. But we can pick that inside tube there and this one and make those concentric. Essentially what we have just done is rebuilt the hot end for E3D's volcano. So what we'll do is we will save that. Third. Now if we wanted to, we could uh, go model one of those silicone socks that goes in here. And additionally, we could throw in the heat cartridge and dewiring with SolidWorks, which was an amazing feature that I still don't know how to use. But most importantly, um, we're going to rename a couple of these things to fall in line. Um, save all of these. Yeah, we can definitely rename that. It's probably going to mess up my other model. It's fine. And then what I want to do is create a sub assembly. Form new sub assembly. So that just makes it a chunk inside of a chunk. So we will rename this. And Bob's drunk. And we'll save that. And we'll ask us, I like to save these externally. Um, make 
curious. What's going on? Okay. And actually, that reminds me, I saved that in the wrong place before. So. Doesn't like that. <laughs> all right, so I'm just going to reopen that so it's in the right spot, and we keep all of our appropriate references. Okay, that's good. So this is part of our known parts. Um, and that is just one unit of our assembly. And next we will work on getting together a precision piezo. So let's do that. I think I have that here. Yep. So let's see. Um, Ryan grew clamp three. I think I made these ones, and it says improved, but they weren't actually improved. They didn't. All right, that is what we are looking for. <coughs> and that is the wrong one. So we'll get rid of that. Maybe I just do that. Nope. Alright, I'll just go with that. And I think we can mostly ignore that that little piece is in there. I think it's from actually being able to print this. Okay, so um, let's look at our orientation here. So that's the front plane, our right plane. I'm trying to figure out how I want to make this. I guess we can use that reference geometry. So first I'm going to make this to one of these planes. And by that I mean I'm just going to tell it to be parallel. I don't actually want it to be now we can still move that. And then we can do the same thing with the bottom here. And again, we just be parallel. And then we can tell it to be in center. Alright, and then it's a matter of making this thing line up. Kind of sneak in. We'll sneak in here and find the appropriate face to select. I'm really picking the inside of this model here. And then I'm going to mate it to the top of that. Ta da! Alright, so we should note that right now this Orion groove clamp is outside of the other sub-assembly that we made. So I think we kind of want to And let's 
let's see, now we can insert the PCB. Now, uh, something to note, this is the side that needs to go down. Um, let me pull up their product page here. So when you're working on projects like this, never be afraid to go find the documentation. Uh, assemble the parts as shown, tighten screws. Da, da, da. It's essentially a version of this that we're making. And again, uh, for this thing to press correctly, we want it to be able to press up on it, and that's what happens. That's what makes these uh, piezo things flex and respond. So, always a wise idea to read the appropriate directions. Um, I think it just makes this parallel. This parallel. And then we're going to make this inner cylinder here of the board in center Now we can kind of rotate it loosey goosey around that. And just as a sanity check, we can look at the top here. And for the most part, these match up. Now you're wondering, why isn't this so square? Well, I gotta hand it to the designers of the piezo uh, stuff here. Uh, what they intend for you to run a screw through this part and cinch it down. So when you squeeze it into place, it will finally match up. So the only thing we're going to do is tell it to be in contact. And let's just fix that face. And then... Probably just give it another face to tell it to be parallel. There we go. And I believe that fully defines our part. It does. And that is the piezo assembly. What we want to do now is group that in. assembly oh, Alright, so good so far. We will have to remember that wires come off this and turn up the top. But that's not too bad. Also I have to remember that these screw holes don't work. And additionally, because this part right here was kind of center X, needs to flex when it gets pushed on, we're going to have to do a little bit of relief part above this. So, so far, that is a good assortment of everything that we need to get done. I think that's a good stuff. Uh, part two, we're going to start making our own pieces. This uh, was kind of more of an orientation in SolidWorks and the basic concepts of getting known existing pieces to kind of fit together in the way that you want them to. So we'll keep working with this. All the files that I have been using or will use uh, will either be included in a link in the description or a more extensive tutorial or they'll uh, be available in the entire download of everything. And we'll do a follow-up at the end of how this all turns out. All right, thank you.